Ahoy and welcome! My name is Clemens Helm and you're watching CodeChip Testing Tuesday number 6. In last week's episode we talked about Selenium, about recording and replaying your tests in the browser with Selenium IDE, and about running your Cucumber JavaScript features using Selenium WebDriver. Also, thanks for recommending me a hairdresser, it was totally worth it. Now, you may have noticed that we've talked about Cucumber so far in every single screencast. That's why today we make another episode on Cucumber. I will present you my top 5 Cucumber best practices. First and most importantly, write declarative features. What are declarative features? Well, here we see two scenarios. They actually describe the same thing, signing up successfully in an application. On the left side, we list all the steps that are necessary for a user to sign up. To go to the home page, click a link, fill in a form, submit the form, and then there's a validation that the user is actually signed in. At the right side, we don't mention anything about clicking or filling in something. It's just, you open the application, you sign up, with an email address and afterwards you should be signed in. It is actually how a user would describe the scenario. A user wouldn't say I want to go to the home page and click a link and then enter some data and submit the form. A user just wants to sign up. So this scenario represents much more what the aim of this feature is. Also it's much better readable. If you read this one year later you probably will stay awake in comparison to this scenario here. And it's much more vivid and descriptive, so you will understand immediately what it is about. Whereas here, you have to read through all the steps to figure out what's actually happening. And also think about what happens when you change the signup one day. Let's say instead of the email address, you require a username for the signup. Then you have to change all scenarios that fill in the email address to filling in the username. Whereas here, you just have to change the single step definition and you're good. So the right scenario is more descriptive, understandable, and not bound to a specific user flow. You should also always put a narrative of the feature at the top. So let's paste this in here. In order to specify and implement new features, as a software developer, I want to write down scenarios in Cucumber. But why is this actually necessary? I mean, it doesn't validate anything, it doesn't get executed, it's just plain text. In fact, the most important part is the first line here tells us why we are actually implementing this feature. If the user didn't benefit from this feature, why would we even implement it? So the narrative should usually include three things. The benefit, a role, who this feature is for, and the feature itself. The advantage for you as a software developer is that when you start implementing the feature and you write this narrative, you actually have to think about why you are doing this. And I believe that this will make you write better software in the end. The other reason is that other people will also understand even in a few months or years, why this feature exists. And it's quite easy to figure out if you still need this feature or not. When you look at this Cucumber step, what's wrong about it? It contains two different actions. The first one is composing an email and the other one is sending an email. We can also see this quite clearly in the step definition, where an email is created and sent in a second step. These kind of steps are called conjunctive steps, and usually it's the best to separate them. So let's do that now. We split the step into two, and I'm also gonna paste the step definitions for these two steps here. So now each step represents one action. But what is this good for? If a step just contains one logic action, it's highly reusable. Let's say we have another feature where we use the same steps again, and we make an additional step and I add cucumber at codeship.io as recipient. Although this is another scenario, we can perfectly reuse these two steps. We just have to add the single step definition. Voila! By the way, you might have noticed that I use instance variables here in my cucumber step definitions to use the same objects in multiple steps. That's perfectly fine as long as you don't get confused with it. There are certainly cases when conjunctive steps make sense, but most of the time you should rather break them apart. Another nice feature that Cucumber offers is that you can use steps in other steps. So when we add a step definition here, when I compose an informal email to somebody, then we can recall this step above here. We can just say, okay, call this step, I compose an email to email address. 
and have access to the instance variable afterwards and can perform additional actions here. This is great because it reduces code repetition. Apart from ending up with less code, the advantage is that you only have to change the code in one place when the way you compose an email changes. So this will make your features less brittle and you will end up with less work in the end. And also the last best practice deals with repetition. We've got two scenarios here that cover the way CodeChip works. Most areas of the CodeChip application are just accessible when you're actually signed up. So this is a requirement in most of our Cucumber scenarios. The disadvantage is that we have to repeat this precondition in every single scenario. To get rid of this repetition, we can put a background at the top of this feature and insert the given step here. And this given step will be executed before each of the scenarios, so we can also remove every other occurrence of this given step. Great! And our scenarios are still very readable. However, you should take care that you don't put too many steps into the background. If we put this when step up here, it's nice because it removes repetition and it's even shorter, but in fact our scenarios aren't readable anymore because without the background we have no idea what's actually going on. So try to keep the main storyline in the scenario and put everything that's just about setup and preconditions into the background. So these are my top 5 Cucumber best practices. I've just scratched the surface and there are many more best practices out there, so you might want to check out the further reading section of the blog post. Of course, I'm also interested in your best practices. So as usual, leave me a comment and make me happy. Next week we're going to talk about creating and maintaining test data. I can't promise that I won't cover a little bit of cucumber though. So see you next Tuesday, have a nice week and of course, always stay shipping.